In these waters, steel bends, engines fail, and ships vanish without a trace. Not from pirates, but from the sea itself. These aren't disaster movie scenes. They're the reality in the world's most treacherous waters. Five regions where nature's fury challenges even the most advanced vessels. What makes these seas so deadly? And why do they continue to claim lives despite our technology? Here are the five most dangerous seas you wouldn't want to sail through. Between North America and Europe lies an ocean with a reputation for unpredictable fury. The North Atlantic has crucial shipping lanes that have connected continents for centuries. Here, the warm Gulf Stream collides with the frigid Labrador Current, creating a chaotic battlefield of water. This volatile interaction generates conditions that can transform from serene to catastrophic within hours. The North Atlantic presents sailors with tons of hazards. Massive icebergs drift silently southward from Greenland's glaciers. Winter brings hurricane-force storms that sweep across the basin without warning, generating waves reaching heights of 60 feet. Most terrifying are rogue waves, sudden walls of water up to 100 feet high, born from rare alignments of wave systems. They don't follow patterns, they just appear and hit like freight trains. In these waters, even the unsinkable Titanic met its end swallowed by the cold after striking a silent iceberg, taking 1,500 lives with her. More recently, in 2015, the cargo ship SS El Faro ventured into Hurricane Joaquin. All 33 crew members perished when the vessel sank to the ocean floor. In 2023, the Titan submersible imploded while diving into the Titanic wreck. The crushing pressure at nearly 13,000 feet destroyed the vessel instantly, killing all five passengers. But as perilous as the deep ocean can be, sometimes the shallow waters present even greater challenges. Let's head east to our next marine danger zone. Don't be fooled by its modest size. The North Sea, flanked by six European nations, sits atop the continental shelf of Northwest Europe, a maritime environment that defies its seemingly tame appearance. This sea's particular menace comes from its shallow depth, averaging just 312 feet. Combined with exposure to Atlantic storm systems, this creates a dangerous formula. Minimal water depth forces waves to build higher and steeper than in deeper waters, hitting vessels with such force. Winter brings waves climbing to 50 feet in height. A phenomenon known as the freak hole occurs when underwater topography changes abruptly, causing waves to surge unexpectedly. Combined with fierce tidal currents and hidden sandbanks like the Dogger Bank, it's no wonder offshore workers call it the Widowmaker. What makes the North Sea especially dangerous is how quickly conditions can deteriorate. A sunny morning can transform into a raging storm by afternoon. The surrounding land masses funnel wind systems, accelerating them across the water's surface. During winter storms, wind speeds regularly exceed 70 knots, generating steep, breaking waves that arrive in rapid succession, giving vessels little time to recover between impacts. Ships in the North Sea don't just face towering swells. They battle relentless batteries of steep, breaking seas that test the structural limits of any vessel. The Alexander L. Kieland oil platform disaster of 1980 demonstrated this sea's destructive capability. During a vicious storm, a structural failure sent the entire platform capsizing into the turbulent waters. Of the 212 personnel aboard, 123 died. Survivors described the horror of escaping the rapidly tilting structure as it plunged into the frigid waters. Even in 2019, with all our technological advancement, the cruise ship Viking Sky, with 1,373 people aboard, lost all engine power during a fierce storm. 
As the vessel drifted toward jagged shoreline rocks, helicopters airlifted over 400 passengers before engineers managed to restart the engines and avert disaster. While the North Sea is infamous for its shallow, violent waters, our next region is notorious for exactly the opposite reason. It's a vast, remote ocean where help can be thousands of miles away. Surrounding Antarctica is a ring of water so consistently violent that sailors nicknamed its latitudes the Roaring Forties, Furious Fifties, and Screaming Sixties. This ocean forms a complete circle around the Earth with no landmass to slow it down. With no continents to block its flow, the Antarctic Circumpolar Current moves 135 million cubic meters of water per second, 100 times the flow of all Earth's rivers combined. This powerful current circles non-stop, unlike any ocean current on the planet. The uninterrupted stretch allows winds to build enormous waves. Storms regularly produce 50-foot swells, with satellites measuring monsters exceeding 80 feet. In 2018, researchers recorded a 78-foot wave, the largest ever measured in the Southern Hemisphere. Water temperatures barely rise above freezing, giving anyone who falls overboard just minutes to survive. Add in floating icebergs and sea ice, and you're facing one of Earth's most hostile environments. The legendary story of Ernest Shackleton's endurance shows this ocean's power. In 1915, pack ice trapped and eventually crushed their wooden ship like kindling. Through remarkable leadership, Shackleton guided all 28 crew members to safety across ice and open water. During the 1998 Sydney to Hobart yacht race, a fierce storm claimed six lives and destroyed five boats. Winds exceeding 90 miles per hour created towering waves, turning the race into a fight for survival. 55 sailors were rescued in Australia's largest peacetime maritime emergency operation. But as we continue our journey southward, we encounter a narrow passage where all these dangers become concentrated in a bottleneck between continents. The Drake Passage deserves its nickname as a sailor's nightmare a 500-mile bottleneck where South America nearly touches Antarctica, forcing the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans to collide violently. Experienced sailors have called it the most dreaded bit of ocean on the globe, for good reason. This narrow channel squeezes the entire Southern Ocean's flow through a relatively tight space, speeding up currents and making waves larger. Conditions are so unpredictable that sailors classify crossings into just two categories, Drake Lake, Rare Calm Periods, or Drake Shake, the much more common rough seas. Waves commonly reach over 40 feet, while winds blow at hurricane strength, exceeding 75 miles per hour. The meeting of cold Antarctic waters with warmer northern currents creates dense fog and rapidly changing weather. The navigational challenges here are compounded by the remote location. Ships that encounter trouble face the sobering reality that help might be days away. Radio signals can be unreliable, and rescue vessels must battle the same treacherous conditions to reach those in distress. A strange phenomenon called cross seas happens here, where wave systems from different directions intersect. Ships report the disorienting experience of being tossed in multiple directions at once, with water washing over even the highest parts of large vessels. The 2007 sinking of the Explorer cruise ship shows just how dangerous this passage is. Despite being specially designed for polar travel, the ship hit the ice and flooded quickly. All 154 people survived, but had to wait hours in lifeboats on freezing waters for rescue. For centuries, sailors who successfully crossed the Drake Passage earned special respect. Today, many Antarctic tourists choose to fly over this infamous stretch rather than risk sailing it. Proof of its fearsome reputation that even modern ships can't completely overcome. Just beyond lies our final destination, a cape that has claimed more ships than any other place on Earth. 
At South America's final outpost stands maritime history's most infamous landmark, Cape Horn. This stark rocky promontory at 55 degrees 59 south rises from the turbulent confluence of the Atlantic and Pacific. Since European sailors first rounded it in 1616, this single geographical point has claimed over 10,000 lives and 800 vessels, earning the grim nickname the Sailor's Graveyard. The Cape's deadly reputation stems from a unique convergence of geographic factors. The seafloor surges dramatically upward from oceanic depths to shallow continental shelf. When the mighty Antarctic circumpolar current encounters this underwater barrier, it's forced skyward, generating towering waves that can reach a hundred foot crests. The Tierra del Fuego archipelago creates a natural wind tunnel, concentrating winds that regularly exceed 100 miles per hour. Average wind velocity hovers around 30 knots year-round, with stronger gusts commonplace. This meteorological challenge produces extreme conditions, spanning two-thirds of the calendar year, with severe storms occurring on roughly 200 days annually. For centuries, attempting to round Cape Horn was a defining challenge for sailors. In the age of sail, ships would sometimes spend weeks battling the relentless conditions, tacking back and forth against contrary winds and currents while fighting for every nautical mile. Historical maritime records compiled by the Chilean Navy and international maritime authorities document approximately 800 vessels lost near Cape Horn between the 17th and 20th centuries. These records show the highest concentration of shipwrecks occurred during the commercial sailing era of the 19th century. In 1992, the Chilean Navy erected the Cape Horn Memorial to honor the estimated 10,000 sailors who lost their lives in these waters. The monument includes an albatross sculpture, the traditional symbol for fallen sailors. Analysis of modern shipping data shows most commercial vessels now opt for the Panama Canal route despite it being longer in many cases. The handful of cargo ships that still navigate around Cape Horn are typically specialized vessels built with reinforced hulls and advanced weather monitoring systems. Modern navigational systems have reduced but not eliminated the dangers. Even today, approximately 20 major vessels annually encounter serious difficulties in these waters. As seafarers have long observed, below 40 degrees south, there is no law. Below 50 degrees, there is no God. From the frozen silence of the Southern Ocean to the chaos of Cape Horn, these waters are more than just rough. They're reminders. Reminders that no matter how advanced we get, nature still holds the upper hand. These seas don't just test ships. They test the limits of what it means to cross the world. Now, we ask you, which of these seas would you never want to sail through, or have you already braved one of them? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear your story or your pick for the most dangerous waters on Earth. And thank you for taking the time to watch. If you enjoyed our video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe for more True Geo stories from all around the world. Until next time.